If the client says, oh, I don't know, you're the creative one, make it up. I, I never, I never, ever, ever work with that. So whether I'm talking to a client or talking to my team, the most important things that first need to be understood from the client clearly before you can deliver that to your team where you're describing the idea to someone is, one, what is the goal? What is this thing supposed to do? If you're a designer, if you're any kind of creative service provider, what is the purpose of the thing? What is the one thing it's supposed to do? That's the most important. The second thing is the context. Where will this live? What is the format? What platform does this live on? How long is it going to be? Is it moving? Is it static? What is the context? Who is the audience? The audience is important. What do they care about? What are the things that they need to see that they need to get out of this? What is the action that you would want them to take after they see this? So that's the context. That's number two. Those are all the things you have to consider. So that's the goal, number one, to the context. The third thing, what are the parameters that we have to work in? So you have a big goal. What is the sandbox that you're going to play in? What are the rules of the game? Because you have to clearly define rules before you start. Because if the client says, oh, I don't know, you're the creative one, make it up. I, I never, I never, ever, ever work with that. That is, that is not a parameter I, I like to work in. Because if it could be anything, that means it could be everything. And if it could be everything, you're going to be spinning your wheels for a long time. And unless this client has unlimited time and money, there's no way that that's going to work. And there's no way you're going to hit a bullseye for them. Basically, you're guessing, you're, you're throwing a dart in the dark, hoping it's going to land on the target. And that's just guessing. And you don't want to be guessing in this game because you're wasting your time and you're wasting your client's time. So you have to understand what are the parameters of this project, meaning creatively, what is this going to be? Are there any brand guidelines that you have to follow? Are there things that it must do? And are there things it absolutely shouldn't do, things that you should avoid? So that's a very clear black and white thing to box this into. So that makes it very tight. The next thing is, well, if it's a creative thing, again, there's a lot of room for interpretation. Language is very, very important here. So if the client says, you know what, I want this to be energetic and exciting, I'll listen and I'll say, okay, that sounds wonderful. What does that look like to you? And then I wait for their response. Oh, you know, um, you know, like that Transformers movie. That, that was pretty exciting. Okay, okay well, what about the Transformers movie? Is it the pacing? Is it the music? Is it the way that the things are cut? Is it the visual effects? What about it? And you would just keep asking a series of clarifying questions until you get down to the nugget of what it is. It's like, oh, no, no, no. What I mean for exciting is, you know, Michael Bay always does the shot where the person standing up in the middle of the frame and then we're rotating around them. I want one of those shots in this video. Oh, okay. Now I get it. Great. Perfectly clear. So when you hear any of this, um, what I like to call coded language or language that there's just so much room for interpretation because it's shorthands that we use, make sure you dig down and understand and find an example of what that might be or find a range of things that it could be. It doesn't have to be so specific. Just try and identify a few examples because you have to then go back to your team or if, even if you're working by yourself, you have to look at those notes later and interpret, shoot, what the heck does exciting mean? And you, then you're just left guessing again, right? So you have to spend the time on the calls uh, with your clients to really understand what those things mean. So that's the parameters, right? So just identify as many of those parameters so you know the, the space that you have to work with. And there's, you're just kind of identifying some dots. And then once you go to work, you're going to try and connect those dots effectively, right? Or you can build more from that. But you just need a space to play, with, play in. So you're not trying to tackle everything possible in the world. You're tackling a very specific uh, area of things that would be effective to solve for this project. So once you have the goal, once you have the context, and then you have the parameters to work within. So now that you've spent the time to translate the language from the client, you're turning that into actionable steps for your team. So let's say if you have a team of three designers, you might say designer one, I want you to work on a direction that addresses these two parameters. Designer two, I want you to do uh, parameters three and four. 
And Designer 3, I want you to do a wild card thing. I know this is their goal and they gave us these parameters, but I want you to play outside of the box just a little bit. And here's what I mean. And all of you guys, uh, I'd like to see something by end of day Friday, meaning you have until the end of day tomorrow. We'll review it together and then uh, we'll talk about where we're at. So it's very important when you're giving this brief now to the team, after you've taken this from the client, to give that to your team, give them a clear roles and responsibilities and agree upon deadlines. It's like, how does that sound? Does that make sense to you? So when you're giving these briefs to your team, now you're just making sure that they have the space to say no. Because if I'm giving this direction, this action to Ben, I want him to feel confident that he can do it. I don't want to give him something and then all of a sudden, Friday, end of day, he's like, uh, yeah, it wasn't enough time. I just need to know. It's like, does that sound reasonable? I could hear no, that's perfectly okay. And if that's too much, where can we, where do you think we would fall? Or how much time do you think you need? So at that point, I'm just trying to negotiate. I'm trying to figure out if my estimation, if my uh, expectations are set fairly, if the things that I've understood from client are clear for the designers to act on. If those things are not, I leave the space there, or I might even go back to client and clarify some things if my designers have asked some good questions that maybe I didn't ask. So I think, let, let me recap the, that real quick. How do you communicate your ideas? Part of it is ex extraction and translating from client, and then the next thing is delivery to your team. And that's understanding of the goal, uh, the context, the parameters to work within, and then the clear roles and responsibility for you and your team. I hope you enjoyed that video. Let me know if you have any questions by leaving us a comment and we'll do our best to answer them. If you're interested in learning more about working with clients and managing your team, I have two resources I've made to help you out. The Practical Project Management Course and the Pitch Kit. I'll leave links to them down below for you to learn more. The full recording of this video is also available there. That's it for us. We'll see you in the future.